All right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's let's kind of work down on way we're going to think. So, the first thing that I've talked about, Jacob, is first of all finding that finding the side that you want to work on, right? Finding the most complicated side to kind of work on. The next thing you want to look at is always look to you know see what you can combine or see what fractions you can get rid of or see how you can create your your common denominators. So when looking at these two, you can you can kind of say, well, they're pretty basically kind of about the same. This one's adding two um, expressions. This one's multiplying two. But when looking at them, you know, you could say which one's really more difficult. Well, you could kind of work both ways, and and you can make maybe make a case either way. The next thing you might want to look at though is remember I talked about always try to look into applying the operations of multiplying, of adding, of giving getting common denominators, and what you notice is, well, if I was going to make the left side look like the right side, I would, I'm obviously going to have to add these two together, right? To make this look like this, that means I'm somehow going to have to separate it by addition. So I would probably say that this is going to be easier for me to create to verify for the right side. So therefore, I just need to simply add these two together. But the problem comes in is tangent and cotangent are not like terms. So we can't, we can't combine tangent and cotangent. So one of the next helpful hints to do is when you're looking at a term, you kind of decided what side you're going to work on. You, uh, you know what operations you're going to do. What the next thing you need to do, Lauren, is you need to start saying, all right, let me convert everything to sines and cosines. So you take every single trigonometric function and you convert it to sines and cosines. Okay, just convert everything to sines and cosines. Take everything. Everything should be in written in times, times, terms of sines and cosines. Uh, then what you can kind of do is you could say, oh, well, what this is is this is really actually fractions with unlike denominators. So let's add these two up. Let's add these together by getting the same denominator. So I can say sine of x times sine of x. And then here I'd multiply by cosine of x times cosine of x. Therefore, on the top I have sine squared plus cosine squared divided by cosine of x sine of x equals 1 over cosine of x times 1 over sine of x. Well, by using the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus so cosine squared equals 1. And therefore, what you'll notice is you could break up the 1. These are exactly equivalent, just written in different ways, right? Because 1 times 1 is essentially what? Right? Just really 1. So therefore, you can say that this is equal to secant of x cosecant of x, which equals secant of x cosecant x. OK. You got two more. Two more to go. Just want to give you guys all your kind of tools, and then I'll